G'day aspiring engineers. If you've worked through all 16 of these basic beginner tutorials in Fusion 360, well then congratulations, you're at the last one today. So this is a pretty simple shape, uh, but we're going to talk about how to make circular patterns. Stick around. Okay, so go ahead and download the 16 drawings. The link is in the description below. Now, this is a simple shape, but there's a couple of things on this drawing and I want to talk to you about drawings in general. So go ahead and uh, pause the video, download and come back when you've printed this off. We don't have to print it off, but it's great to have this in your hand while you're doing some practice here. Alrighty, let's get into it. So this is a flange. Uh, it's a common engineering shape, not only for pipes, but also for uh, all kinds of mechanical products, often they have a, a series of a set of holes spaced around a flange. Turn on the origin of the, uh, the document here by clicking on the little light bulb and right click, sketch, create sketch. Choose one of those planes, doesn't matter so much for this one, and hit the C key for circle. Uh, let's put a circle there and let's draw another circle and a third circle. It uh, doesn't matter what size they are very much. Hit the D key to get the dimension tool and let's put uh, a size on this uh, internal one and that's uh, 100 millimeters. The next one is 130 going by our drawing and the last one, the final one, the outside one is 230. Now I do want to put one more circle on there. Uh, oops, dropped out of the circle tool, there it is. C gets back, back into it. Put that one there, hit the S key for the select tool, select that last one that we drew and turn it into a construction line. Uh, we also want to put a size on that one. So um, D for uh, dimension tool, select that one and the, this is what we're going to call a pitch circle diameter and its size is 175. Okay. Let's uh, drop out of the sketch by hitting the E key, E for extrude, and uh, we only need to select a profile here, this one and this one. Don't worry about the internal one, we can leave that as a void. And the distance we want here is 15, but we want it to go out in the opposite direction. We want to have that, that plane on, still on the top of this flange, so I'm going to type in minus 15 and enter. Okay, and normally what happens when you uh, do an extrude is that it'll turn off the sketch that it used. But uh, we want to use that again, so let's turn that sketch back on and hit the E key and choose that little inner annulus there. And you see that this has got a, uh, an extrusion that's pointing in the correct direction. And you look, from that, look at our uh, uh, drawing here and you see that the total height of this part is 80. We've already done a, uh, an extrusion with a depth of 15, so 65 is the distance of what we need to do in our second extrusion. So you can see our part here, and we've got the, uh, the first sketch still visible, and it's got that pitch circle diameter. Now let's uh, go back and do a little bit of a, an edit to the, uh, the sketch, and so all you've got to do is right click on the, uh, the sketch in the tree, and find edit sketch in the fly out menu. I uh, forgot to put in one thing and that's an alpha line and I'm going to put a line from the center of the part vertically and uh, let's click that little green tick just to get the chewing gum off my shoe. Now you can see that I've picked up a vertical constraint here on that line and that's good. If you didn't get that vertical constraint, select the line with the, uh, the select tool, select the line and hit that uh, uh, horizontal vertical constraint in the constraints palette. The next thing I want to do is select that line one more time and make it a construction line and uh, that way it's not going to interfere with our geometry at all. Now we need another line starting from the center again and it's somewhere out here. Uh, hit that green tick, hit the uh, S key to get the select tool, select the line, turn it into a construction line, hit the D key to get the dimension tool and get a, let's put a dimension between those two lines. And uh, the angle that we want here is uh, 22.5. Uh, 
Now the reason why I've chosen 22.5 is that uh, we've got eight, eight holes spaced around the pitch circle diameter and there's a tradition, there's a convention in engineering and that is that you don't put uh, one of the holes on a flange in at 12 o'clock on the, on the clock. You always uh, have them equally, equally spaced around the flange and so if you divide 360 degrees by 8 you get 45 half of 45 is 22.5 and that's why I've offset a line there we'll come back to that so uh, let's drop out of the sketch there's the stop sketch button nice and handy uh, now let's uh, have a look at this we need to do another uh, sketch so ske uh, right click sketch create sketch and I'm going to choose the, uh, the top of the flange the flange itself and I'm going to hit uh, C for circle and put a I'm going to make sure that I get the center point of the circle right on the intersection of the line and the pitch circle and uh, all I need is the D for dimension I'm going to make that a particular size and looking at our drawing these holes around the flange are all 15 millimeters in diameter stop the sketch and hit the E key actually I should have just hit the E key shouldn't I now uh, in order to extrude this one we're going to pick the uh, well, we're going to pick up the quadrants here by the looks of things if anybody's watching and knows how to pick the whole this little circle here what I'm doing wrong go ahead and tell me making a bit of a mistake there just got to be careful selecting that one and we've got it and so the, uh, the distance for this one, you see that the little blue arrow is pointing up, so we need a minus, and the thickness of the flange is 15. That's got it. Alrighty, so uh, there's a, uh, a flange uh, on this part, and we've got one hole in position. Let's uh, look at the, uh, let's go to the create menu and find the, the pattern command. And on the pattern flyout, we've got rectangular pattern, circular pattern, and pattern on a path. We're just interested in the circular pattern for now. And you'll see that uh, there's a number of different kinds of pattern that you can make. In the dialog box, it can do features, faces, bodies, and components. So uh, we're, in the, uh, we're going to be doing a feature. We're doing a pattern of features here. And the next thing that the software wants us to do is to select the feature that is going to be patterned. And so I'm going to go down to the feature tree, which is along the bottom of the screen, and pick that hole that we created a moment ago. And so there it is selected, and the, it's now asking for an axis. So uh, I'm going to click the blue axis, as you can see there, and that's got it selected. The uh, type of rotation is either a full or an angle, and it can be symmetric. But we're going for a full rotation here. There's an option to suppress things. I'll show you about that in a minute. Now there's three in there by default, we'll change that to eight according to our drawing. And so we're right to go now. I'll click OK. And there's our part. But uh, let me show you a, uh, what I was going to show you a minute ago about the uh, suppress feature. So in the, in the feature tree along the bottom of the window, we can see the, uh, the pattern feature there. If I right click on that, I can choose edit feature in the list. and. Uh, We've got suppress ticked in the dialog box, and you notice we've got these little tick marks on all of the eight instances, or the seven extra instances of the pattern. Let's turn off this one here, and you see that I've unticked it, and we'll click OK, and the pattern has that missing. So we'll go back there and right click, edit feature, turn that back on, and OK, and there we have it. So our part's done, and uh, let's turn off the visibility of the first sketch that we made and uh, there it is we could even turn off the uh, the point of origin again and the reference planes that go with it so there's a part that's a very common uh, engineering part so congratulations if you've been following through with all 16 tutorials basic tutorials in fusion 360 you're done and uh, if with a little bit more practice now you're able to really model just about any basic engineering component so check on this uh, click on this card above and uh, Watch my video, What's Next After the 16 Basic Tutorials in Learning Fusion 360 Part Modeling. See you another day.